Welcome to Love Lauren, I'm your host Michael. On today's video, we're having a detailed look at the billet clutch from Moparts Oz. George at Moparts Oz, aka Scott Bonner Fabrication and Parts, has been our primary channel sponsor for some time, and he generously sent us this kit to use with the community build machine. As part of that project, we're rebuilding a Scott Bonner 45 together with our sponsors and our viewers. We're actually converting it into a verti mower. Click the link above or in the video description to watch that series. The kit we're looking at today is the SB45 Billet Clutch Half and Ring Side Kit, and it includes everything you'll see in this video, excluding the cork. So be sure to add corks to your cart if you place an order. George sells these clutches in different kit configurations, or you can buy just the individual components you require. George also makes and sells a centrifugal clutch, and you may want to have a look at one of those as an alternative to the billet clutch. The centrifugal clutch engages automatically as the engine speed increases, and in contrast with the design of this clutch, there's no clutch cone or lever to operate. Check out mopartsoz.com.au for all the good stuff. Off. But back to the billet clutch. This clutch is machined from billet aluminium, hence the name. A billet is a solid length of material that's been extruded into a cylindrical shape. A CNC then removes material to form the various clutch components. Clutch halves were originally cast in iron or aluminium. Casting involves heating the metal past its melting point before pouring it into a mold. As I understand it, and in very broad terms, billet aluminium is generally stronger than cast aluminium and has a greater internal consistency, which leads to increased balance in the final product. Couple that with the benefits of machining, and any remaining imbalances in the material are essentially being machined out. And, of course, a CNC runs a computerized program, so it's not only consistent, but also ridiculously accurate. Just to look at it, this clutch is obviously a well-made quality component. It also feels awesome to hold. There are no sharp edges, it's smooth to touch, to the point of being shiny, and it's altogether refined. I'll admit, I initially wondered, as you may be, how the aluminium compares in weight to a cast clutch, but this thing definitely has a fair heft to it. It's no lightweight. Looks aside, this clutch will spin true on any engine shaft that runs true, which ultimately reduces vibration transmitted to your mower frame. And that's a great way to reduce the likelihood of stress fractures and cracking in your twin rail and even your solid deck frames. This clutch will replace your existing clutch body. For starters, it's available to fit 5 8 of an inch or 3 quarter inch engine shafts. It also uses the same cork material in the same place and engages the clutch cone in the same way as the original clutch design. The clutch is secured to the engine shaft using a key, a cotter pin, and a single retaining bolt or a grub screw. Let's look at these parts closely. The cotter pin is one of George's high tensile cotter pins, so you know it's going to be well made. The cotter pin is matched to the size of the engine shaft and clutch bore of either 5 8 or 3 quarters of an inch. Unlike your run-of-the-mill cotter pins, the radius of the cutout on George's cotter pin actually matches the radius of your engine shaft. It will therefore contact a significant section of that shaft once installed. Not all cotter pins are made to these standards, and compare this to the single point of contact a retaining bolt makes with the shaft on the Rover design clutch halves. A cotter pin simply offers greater clamping force than Rover's cost-saving dual grub screw solution ever could. The key also registers the slot in the clutch half with the engine shaft, and a locking retaining bolt then bears down against the top of the key to hold it in place. This bolt is tightened using the internal hex head, and the washer and nut then bear against the clutch body to lock it in place. Let's look at the internals next. Given the opportunity to rethink and modernize this clutch, George has replaced the thrust bearing we're used to seeing, the one with the rounded edge, with a quality Japanese bearing. Unlike the old bearings, these sealed bearings are readily available off the shelf at any bearing shop when it comes time for a replacement in 10 years. George helpfully supplies the clutch with a bearing already installed. This bearing additionally receives a stainless steel top hat, which has a spring seat cut into it to receive the clutch spring. The top hat is pressed into the bearing in the same way we're used to with the intermediate clutch. Other than its innate material beauty, the ringside clutch half is what we expect it to be. We've taken the cork out here and you can see it looks just like the original halves, complete with the outer lip. It's going to hurt a bit to smear contact cement all over that interface. When it comes time to put the two clutch halves together, you'll find another surprise, testament to George's eye for detail and innovative approach. The two clutch halves fit together perfectly, as you'd expect, but you'll also find the holes for the three fastening screws on the engine side half are threaded. So the stainless steel bolts pass through the ring side half and thread into and through the engine side half, before washers and nylock nuts are installed on the other end. Talk about a positive connection. To round out the drivetrain and totally complement this clutch, you can also purchase new clutch cones and PTO shafts from mopartsoz.com.au. As usual, you'll be in good hands with George. We'll be installing this very clutch on the community build machine in an upcoming episode, so don't forget to hit subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released. Feel free to smash that like button too if you enjoyed today's video, and of course, we'd love to hear from you in the comments section here on YouTube. We've got lots more content for you on Facebook and Instagram, and you'll find all the links mentioned throughout the video and more in the video description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.